Well, good morning, guys. Have you missed me? I've missed you. It's been a while. And there's a good reason for that. Spring has sprung exceptionally early this year, and uh, we've been busy. We've been busy in the bush collecting firewood. We've been dealing with our emerald ash borer problem with all sorts of trees coming down. We've got one on the back of the cabin here, and uh, we're collecting firewood. But uh, because it's unseasonably warm, we decided to actually uh, start tapping our maple trees in order to collect our sap till we can make our maple syrup. Uh, so we did that the other day. It was above a seasonably high. It was crazy warm. It was running crazy quick. And uh, so we tapped it. We've collected, uh, we haven't collected anything actually yet. We got to get the, the, the sugar shack ready to boil. We've got a batch we can, uh, we can do, we can do today, but we've got a lot of, uh, we've got a lot of things on the go spring. Like I said, it's an exceptionally busy time of year, especially living like this. You can see we don't have that much snow on the ground. It's about like two inches or so. It's, uh, oh, there's grass. That's strange. Grass. Anyways, but uh, it hasn't snowed a heck of a lot this year. We've pretty much lost it all. Got a little bit in the bush and, uh, yeah, cabin still standing, much to the chagrin of many of the commenters that said it was going to fall down. Give you guys a little update on that a little bit later. Uh, but uh, what does fall down is these trees. These, these, this is a, that's an ash tree. You can see they're dead and it kind of, it hit the cabin. It doesn't appear as though it did any damage, which is crazy. It didn't even, like it hit here and it didn't, uh, it didn't even dent that Vic West roof. <laughs> it, uh, maybe it, it supported itself on the solar panels on the roof, but anyways, it weathered it okay. That's what we're dealing with is the ash trees. There's another one there. And uh, anyways, that's one leaning away, but that one isn't. Anyways, that's what we're dealing with. And uh, we kind of put everything aside because what we do is uh, we start our maple syrup season. It's kind of like one of those things you just kind of do it while you're doing other things. So the idea is to clean this guy out today and uh, get it ready. You can see the, uh, the ash build up. We built this on the channel. This is an old oil drum and it's going to be used for our maple syrup evaporation maple sap evaporation gotta clean that guy out there too frankie's frankie's with me today hey frankie what do you think frankie did i get in the bush every year we evolve a little bit with our maple syrup and uh this year is no different we're upgrading our systems in place we just learned from the previous year and then kind of adapt and uh, make it easier you're not getting any younger so you might as well make your systems a little bit easier what we've acquired is a uh, large water toad and this is going to be used as quarter, like an intermediate intermediate collection stage so the thing with boiling because this evaporator works so well is that you uh you run out of sap pretty quick so if we collect for like a number of days even a week and then uh, you store it in here and then you can just do like a big boil all at once and get your you get your sap right down to syrup so this little guy here will hold a lot of sap and it's got a tote at, or a spigot at the bottom where you can, uh, you just drain it into a bucket and fill up your evaporator that way. And you just kind of, you know, sit down, relax and watch the fire as opposed to, uh, you know, going to go collecting stuff. So the plan today is to mount this guy up high enough that I can, uh, I can comfortably get a bucket underneath, have it close to the evaporator. Bada bing, bada boom, easy peasy. I've also got, um, another little tool in my, in my toolbox. I got myself a dump trailer, which is a hydraulic dump trailer. It hooks onto the back of the tractor and, uh, it allows me to, uh, comfortably drive around, pick up stuff, load stuff in the back. I've got my blue barrels for collection. My evaporator pans all washed up, which is, uh, is good. And, uh, yeah, so we're going to set that thing up and, uh, we got to get this show on the road. One of the problems with this boat is it's extremely heavy. It's got uh, it's got a big steel frame around it, so it uh, doesn't it doesn't like to be moved by hand. Let's move it by hand.
there we go that wasn't too hard we've got uh it all set up on pallets it's up high we'll be able to just turn the uh, valve on drain the sap into the bucket take the bucket over to the evaporator bada bing bada boom pancakes that was a chore but hey making the system once and then having it help you throughout the uh, season it's gonna pay off in dividends now i just gotta clean this evaporator out and i'm um, all set to uh, go collect maple sap this is why maple syrup is so expensive everything about it is hard work if you're doing this in your stove at home you probably want a metal pail this has been out for I don't know about nine months so it should be safe it's probably the only time i would you know trust it is if it's been out for nine months coals have a tendency to uh linger. this actually should work a whole lot better with less uh, ash in it well it's clean as a whistle as you can see, this is the second year we've used this thing. You can actually check the build out on my channel. It's uh, at an old drum, out of an oiled, old oil drum. But uh, as you can see, the uh, my standoffs that allow the ash to fall through worked really well. Um, this is Roxel that's two years old. If I had some Roxel board, it'd work even better, which is like more dense stuff, but that's just a bad of Roxel insulation. I kind of lost the piece that's on this side. So I'll probably replace that, uh, no big deal. This is, uh, this actually held up really well. It's a stainless steel mesh and it's kind of like my spark arrester to keep a little bit of heat under the box, deflects it. It seems to work really well. And uh, the ash clean out worked really well as well. That there, I'm actually gonna tickle it with the uh, flap disc cause uh, when it heats up, it tends to uh, stick a little bit, even with the door. It sticks a little bit. I'm going to tickle that before I fire it up just on the edges there just to uh, just to make it close a little better. This was cut. My buddy cut this on his CNC machine. So it's uh, it's very, very tight tolerances. You don't really need that tight of tolerances when it comes to evaporators. So, yeah, otherwise this thing is held up awesome. All right, here's our evaporator pan. This we will fill with maple sap and we will evaporate the water off of it. We're left with maple syrup. Word of advice, make sure this is closed before you dump your sap in. Otherwise it'll drain out. This is the, uh, the drain off tube. It's uh, kitchen grade stainless steel because you don't want to be well, I guess you could you could evaporate on uh, cast iron if you wanted to, but uh, this is what we're doing. It's uh, it's about two feet by four feet. It does about an inch an hour worth of evaporation, which is pretty crazy for the surface area it's got. And if you, this is just uh, like hard hard scaling on it. It is clean. It's just the uh, there's minerals and stuff in the sap which accumulate on the sides. It adds to the flavor. Well, that's pretty cool. Look at that. That's uh, a pileated woodpecker does that. It uh, actually makes square holes in the trees. It's probably looking for bugs. You can see it kind of chewing away. It looks like a it looks like a beaver, but that's a cedar tree. A couple of people have asked me how to identify a maple tree or how do I get sap out of a tree. Well, there's a couple of trees you can actually get sap from. You can get sap from walnut trees. It's like a walnut syrup. There's birch sap, which is a lighter color. The thing with maple sugar or maple syrup is that it's got a higher concentration of sugar for the sap that it has so it's optimal to tap a sugar maple and in order to find a sugar maple you pick your tree that you think is a maple you look at the base of it and find a leaf this guy is a maple leaf and uh you can tell because it's the uh it's on the canadian flag that is the uh, the maple leaf. It's also on uh, a lot of the Canadian money. 
So yeah, that's the maple leaf there. So this little guy here, you can actually see where we've tapped it in the past. And uh, you can see by, actually there's little holes and they've, they've healed over. If I look really closely, I can probably see last year's hole. It's, uh, it's mostly done. That's how you can tell your tree is really healthy. So this guy is a fair size maple. You could probably put a couple of buckets on this guy easily. Uh, there's no real rule of thumb on, uh, well, there probably is a rule of thumb on how many buckets you can put per trees or how many taps you can put per tree. And uh, this guy here, I would comfortably fit two taps. The, the modern tap is like a, a uh, by tap, I mean spile, which is the correct term, is uh, much smaller. They drill a much smaller hole. I'm still using the authentic metal spiles that, uh, that I put in the tree. They're, they're slightly bigger. So this guy here, as you can see, it's healing up fine year after year. We've been tapping this tree for about six years now. We can probably count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Look at that. Got a uh, got a time capsule on this tree, and you can go up and down on the tree. The idea is to not go on the same vein as the year before. So this guy here is a maple tree. It is a fair size maple tree, so we should get a lot of sap. And uh, I always tap on the sun side of the tree. I think because it warms up the quickest and uh, produces the most sap. Can you guys see that? This here. Focus on it. Come on, focus, focus. This. This, this is my secret weapon. It is a authentic maple syrup bit. It's got a pointy thing and it's got the spiral that pulls the chips out. It costs like 25 bucks. I got it last year at the end of the season. And it works really, really well. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna drill my hole. I'll drill my hole in the tree on an upward angle so my sap comes out. Oh, it is. Goes in like butter. And I take my spile. Take my spile. Tap it in like that. And I've got my bucket. You can buy fancy buckets, or uh, what I've been doing the last couple of years is I collect these guys at the grocery store. They're old icing pails. Um, and a, a good, actually, interesting, interesting story about these icing pails is that uh, they used to give them away for free. And then uh, I was told by the person at the store that some enterprising person that was working at the store was taking these home and they were washing them and selling them <laughs> and that's why they can't give them away anymore i was like what you should applaud that young person for taking the initiative to earn a little bit of extra money washing buckets i think they were selling them for like three bucks or something anyways they put a stop to that so we take this bucket we drill the hole in the end of it and we're going to put it on the tree. Do I have a nail in my pocket? Anyways, you put a nail on this file and then you put your lid on. And the lid is so the rainwater doesn't collect inside the bucket as well as all of the other junk that is in the forest. Frankie is attacking a tree. And that is how you get the maple sap out of the tree. Now, when the sun comes out today, it's going to start dripping and filling that bucket. All we got to do is wait now. Frankie, Frankie. Hey, Frankie, where are you stick? Frankie, like this. Here, Frankie. Frankie. This tree here has been plaguing the log cabin for a while. It's broke off up top there, so I think I'm going to deal with that just to get it out of the road. It's kind of... I hit it with the tractor too, so I might as well just get rid of it. Come closer! Look! Look how much sap we got! That's like two days of running. Look at this is like the best ever. I think that 
that our little bit is working really well. That's a good looking sap. There's a nail that holds it on. Oh, it's a brand new lid, that's why. How, how is it? Oh, that's uh, not bad. Quarter-ish. Quarter-ish. That's a good one. you've ever seen the earliest you've ever seen it mm -mm. no i've had mid-february before we're, we're mid-february yep it's early but it's not the earliest is that 55 gallons 35 gallons it's not bad so we need would that be 70 gallons, gallons divided by... It would make like two. Two, Just one and, two one, gallons. One and a half. If you got that full. So we got one gallon. One gallon of maple syrup. Yeah. Which is a lot. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we got our lit first of the season. As you can see, it is extremely smoky right now. <clears throat> and it's the reason why is because it's not quite going. A lot of the dust and stuff accumulates on your firebox over the summertime. And uh, that just burns off. So we got uh, we got our fire going there. We got our door sits really nice and tight. As you can see, you can see the condensation forming off the sides dripping in. That's part of the problem. The actual vat is uh, just above freezing. The sap is just above freezing, so we gotta bring that up to a boiling temperature. And then once the fire gets fully established, we have a more of a gasification process going on over here, not so much smoke coming off the sides. We got all the junk and the water evaporating out of there. Our chimney, chimney is chimneying. I think it's uh, it's going good. So we're just kinda, we're basically watching water boil. That's what, uh, that's what making maple syrup is all about. Kind of relaxing, enjoying the outdoors and make it something delicious. No, oh, she looks good. Look at that boil. That's a nice rolling boil. Perfect. We're going to Oh, we're steaming up. We're steaming up. Uh oh, too close. So that's what we want. And at this stage of the game, it just started boiling. It's not very thick. It has no smell really right now, but uh, the uh, longer you boil, you start to get that sweet smell in the air. That's the like my childhood smell, Don. That smell when like the, not right now, but like the yeah the, the candy type of smell. Yeah, you can't see you're you're very you're very foggy, Don. This is a foggy Don. Oh, it's not helping. It's not smoke. It's steam. That's 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 yeah. steam crazy crazy amount of steam coming off that. You know she's working. It reminds me of a story when I was uh, when I was little, little probably like ten or eleven years old. I used to actually go to my neighbor's house. And uh, they had a sugar shack way in the bush and I used to uh, collect out of these metal pails and we'd dump it into a larger vat and then we'd bring it down to their sugar shack. They had a really fancy sugar shack. Like, uh, well, maybe, you know, the 10 year old me thought it was fancy, but it was indoors. And uh, yeah, I spent every spring going over there, helping them. I don't 
most springs, I think, I was, I'd help them collect a maple sap and boil it off. And, you know, at the end of the day, you'd end up uh, either making making candy in the snow, like the toffee, the maple toffee on the snow. That stuff was still delicious. You wrap it in a stick. Oh, that's like, that's, that's childhood right there. Spending time in the bush. Now I got my very own. This is cool. Look at the, look at the boil coming off that. We're close. We're not close. <laughs> 40 to one. You need 40 liters of maple sap to make one liter of maple syrup or 40 gallons of maple sap to make one gallon of maple syrup. Well, it's getting that time of night where it's uh, getting dark out. So I'm going to load the evaporator for one last time. You guys can't even see me. It's too bright, it's too bright. So one last time I'm gonna load the evaporator and uh, I don't wanna load it too full of wood because if it uh, evaporates kind of all out and it just caramelizes to the pan, you gotta actually throw the pan out. So this is sort of a risky maneuver. I like to keep it warm and then the temperature differential overnight tends to have the, uh, it just evaporates because the sap is warm and the air is cool. It's kind of like when you don't put a solar blanket on your pool and all your water disappears, same idea. It's uh, like the slow boil. So that's my plan is to, uh, we're gonna load her up just to the right amount of wood, gonna top it up with a couple of buckets of sap. And uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna evaporate overnight. That's the plan, so. Right amount of wood, right amount of wood. Don't wanna put too much wood in there. <laughs> oh, smoky again. Impart your flavor, smoke. Impart your flavor. Quite a bit of wood in there. That's going to bring our stuff up to a boiling point and then just kind of trickle all night long. Keep that closed. Well, I poured off a little bit of the uh, maple sap because what I'm going to do is boil a little bit of it down there. I'm not sure exactly how much maple syrup is going to be left on that because uh, it's still pretty, uh, it's pretty sappy. So you can, can kind of see there's a little bit of color there. I'm going to throw it on the, uh, the stove because I want, what I want to do is I want to make a dipping sauce for my pizza because I've got some frozen pizza that I, uh, that I brought from home. See, what I do is I order the biggest, cheapest deal they have and I take all the extra pizza that we have and freeze it. And it's very convenient to whenever you want great tasting pizza is you throw it in the oven. And in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to uh, pan fry it. Can you guys hear that? It's raining. It's... <laughs> It's strange, February rain. It's uh, they're calling for a pretty crazy storm. So I don't know if it's gonna, if I can show you. It's like not, uh, you can't really see it. You can kind of see it coming off the roof. It's like freezing rain. Strange, it's a strange year. You usually get February rain. It's good sleeping style, though. That 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 rain off a tin roof. You, you, like, people pay to have that background noise. Listen to it. I don't know if you guys can actually hear it or not. It's getting close now. She's close, she's really close. When the bubbles kind of go up and they stay like that, it's pretty much close to maple syrup. I don't want it to go too off, because what'll happen, gotta be careful with this, 
it'll actually turn to, uh, to sugar and then candy. So I think she's pretty much done. Look at the, can you see the, the bubbles? The bubbles kind of go up and then stay. So that's as far as I want to go. Look at that. Doesn't look like much, but watch. What's the color looking like? I want to go maple syrup. If you go further than that, you can actually make maple sugar. And uh, if you stay a little bit further back, you can actually get um, maple toffee. I feel like Forrest Gump. Or no, was that, was that the shrimp guy? We got bub or bubble gum shrimp. Anyways, you do a lot of stuff with maple syrup. So what my plan with this is uh, actually a pizza dip. So. I'm going to uh, put it in a little serving tray. I got my pizza on the stove, just warming up. Pizza's done. Look at that. Oh, pan fried, reheated. Oh, pizza. Well, that's perfect. If you're going to do a reheated pizza, you got to oven it, pan fry pizza. That's the way to go. Too hot. Too hot. Give it a minute. Whoa. Whew. All right, let's give this a whirl. We got our... our uh, pepperoni ham bacon pizza dipped with our maple oh that's good that's really good get yourself some maple syrup and try dipping your pizza in it <laughs> if you get maple syrup boil it just a little bit so you get a little bit thicker Almost like it's caramelized. You can see the, the drippiness. It's not like that thin, thin, drippy. It's still really warm, so it doesn't, it's still, but when it cools down, if it did cool down, it would be extra thick. It's like toffee. It's like dinner and dessert all wrapped into one. And what's good about it is that when you're done, you have a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a dessert. Wow! Now I'm gonna put that down. I'm gonna take my, give myself a, a minute to digest that because uh, holy sugar. Well, there's a couple of things I've been uh, rattling around the old brain, and it's uh, what's the next project? I've got two in mind right now and I can't really decide which one I want to do. So I'm gonna leave it up to you guys to decide which one you'd like to see me do. They're both equally important. Um, maybe one is more pressing and the other one, maybe it's it's for, you know, more sunny days. So there's two projects. One is um, the sawmill needs, well, it doesn't really need a shed, but it, it would like a shed. I, uh, I really like the sawmill. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it, I think. Well, it's mine, but uh, I I, think, I feel it should have its proper house. And uh, by proper house, I think it needs like some like a pole barn, um, kind of like open one side so you can still get logs in. The, like the mill would stay in there and then have a side that opens up so you can uh, remove the mill if you want to. Because it is on wheels, it's portable. Um, I haven't moved it from its original spot, so it's well anchored there, uh, but it is portable. Kind of want to make it... A nice spot for it so I don't have to chip ice away from it the uh, the rain and whatnot getting onto it it's like you can keep a roof on it I also want a place to store um, like slabs I cut because right now I just kind of tarp them or put a piece of plywood on top of them so that's project number one and uh, project number two is uh, grain bin zebo now you're like what what's a grain bin zebo so I acquired uh, a couple of grain bins uh, they're about 19 feet in diameter um, we ended up using some of the uh, grain bin sections for a different project and I have a spare roof. So I have an entire roof of a grain bin and I was thinking it's a perfect solution for my outdoor kitchen. So I built the outdoor kitchen, basically the island there. And uh, what I'm finding now is that I don't, I don't use it in inclement weather. So when it's raining or if it's snowing or whatnot. So I'm thinking of something like a canopy over top of it to... Um, a, to keep it dry, because uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but in Canada, um, 
there's basically two months of summer. And in those two months of summer, most people go out and, and, and they, you know, they deck out their backyards in anticipation of summer lasting forever. Well, in reality, summer lasts very short period of time in Canada. So we live indoors most of the time. That's, that's why there's so many cabins. That's why there's so many places to kind of go because in the winter time, you're, you're stuck inside. So otherwise, like you can go, if you had the green Benzebo all set up, you could have an outdoor canopy, you wouldn't get snow on your food. Uh, you could sit around there. I'm so like, you know, kind of focal point around by the pond area. So that's my, that's my second project, which is the green Benzebo. I have all the parts for it. I've been, uh, actually I have all the parts for both projects. I've been collecting them slowly over time. Uh, every once in a while I go down to Princess Auto and I get like a giant pulley or something like that. Cause I want to be able to lift massive logs onto the mill. And uh, so I've been collecting kind of hoarding parts and stuff. Every time it goes on sale there, I, I pick it up and I've, I've been stockpiling it. So I, everything's good to go on both projects. Same with nuts and bolts and stuff for the uh, green Benzebo. So it's up to you guys what you think I should do next. I'm leaning towards sawmill shed because like, I think green Benzebo is more of a summer project, but I'll let you guys decide. Uh, there's a couple other little projects that I'm, I'm working on but uh, that's kind of where I'm at right now. I know I've been on hiatus for a little while and uh, that's for a good reason. I did a, uh, I helped my brother out with uh, the pond project. So you guys could check out his pond. Uh, he's doing like a crazy pond series this summer. I've got a couple of projects actually with the pond and it's going to be epic, epic pond project season we've got um what is it a pump it's a soul it's a it's a windmill pump and it pumps water like crazy high so we're gonna make some sort of waterfall and it's got an aeration system uh we're yet to receive those things but we're gonna install them those will be a couple of neat projects uh we've also pretty much uh i think we've found a solution to the um silt issues and uh cloudiness of the water uh, naturally because we, we did geotextile and we did uh, you know rocks and whatnot all the way around so it's uh, it's extra it's extra remediated now it's it's upgraded we've upgraded the pond one more thing I like to mention is that uh, I, I complained about my elbow hurting a while ago and uh, it was actually on the on the um, boat adventure and uh, there was some pretty useful comments and a lot of them I tried out a lot of them I did uh, a lot of topical treatments and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, it took the edge off a little bit, but it didn't really make it go away. And, and uh, I think I didn't consult a doctor, but I diagnosed it myself. I guess the outside is called a tennis elbow and the inside is called golfer's elbow. So what I had was what I think is golfer's elbow. I still kind of have it. It's still there. It still kind of creeps up. But uh, what my, my wife ended up getting was is this thing, which is called uh, the bandit. I have no idea uh, where she got it, but, uh, what it, what it does, I don't know what it does actually. It, it's actually crazy. It, it, it's, I don't know if it's a placebo or if it's actually doing something, but like you put it on your forearm, you strap it in like, that's not tight enough. Anyway, so you get the idea. It sits here and it kind of, I don't know what the heck it does, but it allows you to have instant relief from golfer's elbow who knew that would work and what so if i feel like my 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 elbow is is like hurting that day i put this guy on and the following day it's like i have a brand new elbow i i my brother says it's um it just makes you focus on something else i i don't i don't really believe that but uh he's been right about other things so i don't know maybe maybe it's just uh it's just something that uh yeah, it takes your mind off it or, or something. I don't know. It's it, it's patented. I don't know. It's got a. It can't be just because it's plastic and it's there and it takes your mind off it. I think it it does something. So I don't know if you guys know if there's any any doctors in the house that can tell me what the heck this thing does that makes my elbow not hurt. I don't know. It's called Bandit. I don't know. It's not. Uh, I just it just I was like it works. So I'm going to if anybody else has issues with their with their elbow it's worth a shot right oh yeah one more thing i was going to mention that uh, i was at uh, cabela's bass pro shops the other day and uh did you know they have bedding and it was all on sale so i ended up picking a bunch of throws and a bunch of duvets and uh this is going to be like the coziest warmest sleep ever 
because uh, yeah, they uh, they definitely have some stuff. I actually got my socks from there too, which is uh, their Under Armour socks. They got like boots and all sorts of stuff. I've been trying to get these uh, Neo uh, winter boots, but it hasn't really snowed this winter. So I was kind of like, eh, whatever. I'm just gonna go another winter without getting proper boots. But I know they carry them there, so I was gonna I was gonna look them up. But yeah, my socks. <sighs> well, let me give you a story about my socks. I don't like messing with. Well, you guys probably know I wear the same thing nearly every day. So I, I, it's not that I wear the same clothes every day. It's that I have the same, it's the same color. So I have many, 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 many of these sweaters. It's uh, into the AM and I have many of the t-shirts that go underneath and they're all just kind of the same color. So I kind of, I kind of like consolidate everything. So when I was at uh, Bass Pros, what I actually, they had socks, Under Armour socks, and there was a specific type of sock that I wanted, which was kind of like a, I don't know, it's like a crew sock or anything. It's got like, it doesn't lose its shape. It's got like a rubber band around the ankle. I don't know. Anyways, so I bought, I was like, eh, I'm gonna buy them all because I don't want to fart around with socks anymore. I was just like, you know what? I take the other ones, pile them up, donate them. Somebody else can use my socks. Actually, I think I give them to my dad. <laughs> and, uh, and now I have all the same pairs of socks, which is, which is like, if you can simplify one of those decisions in your life, I think it's the way to go. You kind of take that, that decision away from the morning. You just kind of like, you know what? I'm wearing the same pairs of socks. I don't even have to pick what color. They're, they're going to match. Same with sweaters and t-shirts and stuff. You've got the same of everything. It just takes that, that decision away from you. Everybody's got too many decisions, I think, in life. I think if you simplify, you don't have to, you, you can worry about other decisions in life. It's like decision fatigue. I think of, people got decision fatigue now, I think. You know, you go to the grocery store and you look look down the cereal aisle and there's like 1,500 different types of cereal and you like, yeah, and you end up eating toast or something. Because you're like, I can't, I, you just can't decide. Or you get one in your hand, you're like, uh, uh, it's just, yeah. There's too many, there's too many choices, I think. Yeah, it's just like, I, I try to simplify that way. One last check on the evaporator. She's a boiling. She's got a nice, uh, nice rolling boil going on there. I don't want to. Uh, where's my stick? I got my testing stick. Oh, my stick's on the ground. Is that my stick? Yeah. Clean dirt. Clean dirt. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I stick it in there, and I got about three inches, three inches of sap down here, and that is uh, that won't overboil with the amount of wood that's in there, because I can do about one an hour. It should be perfect, actually. Yeah, you can see there's a heck of a boil coming off that. You can actually hear, I don't know, the noise. Rolling boil here. That'll be just perfect. Perfect for overnight. So I'm going to pretty much uh, shut this thing down. We got, uh, I can see inside there, we got quite a bit of... Oh, my handle came on. Let me put that handle back on. There we go. Yeah, that's, that's not a heck of a lot of wood left. Which is perfect. We don't want to have we don't want to overboil, and then the damper will close that up a little bit. Perfect. All right, we'll let that thing go, and uh, we'll check it in the morning. That is February rain. Strange. All right. Well, got the fireplace all stoked. Don't want it too hot in here lights bright so all right i will catch you guys in the morning this is uh should be a good night this is the most comfortable cabin so anyways have a good night This has got to be the most comfortable cabin that I've ever made. It's so cozy at nighttime and uh, it keeps the heat. It's not even that cold. I don't know what the temperature is out today. Minus six Celsius. So it's not uh, terribly cold, but it's still like it kept, it kept warm all night. I've got a little bit of, I can see a little bit of coals in the fireplace. So that held up. I wonder, I wonder how our maple sap syrup made out. I just kind of, uh, 
I just let her go. So uh, hopefully it's still there. Hopefully it's not just a big caramel goo. Let's uh, I go make a coffee. Sorry, sorry. I probably made up. I probably made a thousand people yawn just now. <laughs> I'm curious how much is left. I got my got my coffee. Let's uh, let's just take a look. Oh, we're still uh, we still got a little bit of steam coming off. Let's uh, you can see. Oh, ever so slight steam. That's perfect. As you can see, there's there's about a half an inch, half an inch left in there. You don't want to boil it down too far. Let's see what we got for left for coal. We got one, one lonely log in there. Maybe I'll stoke the fire. We gotta, we gotta boil it down a little bit further because uh, it's not quite maple syrup yet because we gotta go down 40 to one. I don't want to boil it down too much. So the idea is to, uh, to take this down. We don't really want to finish it because uh, finishing it takes a lot of work. So we want to take it down to the point where we can just kind of leave it. So we've kind of pasteurized it, we boiled it, we've got all the bugs out of it, and uh, we just cover it, and then we wait for the sap to run again. And what I, we do is we add to the existing batch. So you don't want to go down too low and uh, get to the maple syrup side of it be, uh, before you're done. So that's our plan. So we're just gonna get that fired back up, add the rest of my sap, get it up to a boil, and that uh, pretty much call it a day. Because uh, my brother's coming out, Don's coming out today. We're going to be doing some other stuff. I think he's making pancakes or something. So I got a couple things to do. It's getting brighter out. Well, Chris has decided to come back and uh, make us some pancakes because uh, he's good at cooking. He likes cooking. Okay, so I want to answer a couple of questions. And now there was a couple of comments uh, when we originally built this cabin that it wasn't going to last. Uh, it wasn't going to... There was there was a lot of naysayers that said this cabin was the chinking was going to fall out, which is the stuff that sits in the know, middle. I don't know if people said that. They're, read them. They're they're still coming in. Really, people are. Uh, no, I read I, them. I read them. I don't understand. I, I I got the alternate impression that it would last. Like I I didn't see why anybody would have a. Well, problem. because they were like, we, that's done, not how you build a log cabin. You use done. rebar to like it's it's called it's, the button pass method. It's, it's not notching. It's historically the, the used mortar. Yes. It was a, it's not like a historic, it's not like a 200 year old thing. No. Or 300. Well, maybe, I don't know. Well, how long did they have mortar? Well, as soon as they did, they used it for that. Well, it, it was lime. Lime. Lime yes. plaster. Right. But that's the same right? kind of principle. That's a two, that's a 200 year old thing. But it was not even, it's not even the, the chinking was, there was, there was problems about using the logs with the bark not peeled. There was problems with the foundation, they said. Uh, it was going to collapse. Uh, it wasn't going to last. There was problems with the rebar holding the logs on the button pass that everything was going to shift once it dried. Now this is our third winter. So we built it during winter. I'm counting that as one. And then we had a complete winter last year, winter. And this is the end of the third winter. Yeah, it's three years. This is the third winter that this thing has lived. And not the chinking, there's not even a crack. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show some close-ups of the, of the chinking on this, this cabin. And if you look, the, the best way to show how well something has weathered is whether or not the doors and windows, you can see that, I should put a doorknob on it, but like it, it opens and closes. It doesn't, doesn't bind in any way. Well, you didn't have to do that. It's just showing and it hits the frame. Well, it does ever so slightly. And it latches. Y yeah, there's a latch on the <laughs> there's inside. No latch. There's a latch on the inside. You can lock it. See, because it locked himself in. Anyway, so that, that like you can watch all the way around this thing and there is no cracking in any of the mortar. Now I'm going to give a big shout out to the outsider. He actually led me on to the idea of using lath with metal lath between the logs and actually nailing them up and down to uh, to secure them to the logs. And I think that helped quite a bit. And as you can see, like even the miter joints on the uh, that's the, nothing, nothing is shifted. So and in reality, this thing is built on four giant pieces of cedar. Now those pieces of cedar are embedded in uh, clay mud. And uh, what kind of environment is that when it's embedded in, in, in clay? It's uh, like anaerobic, no oxygen. Sure. Is yeah. that, is that what it is? Anaerobic. Yeah. So that's, that's the, the foundation of this cabin is, is basically on an, anytime you don't have oxygen attacking something, it tends not to rot. It kind of like petrifies itself or 
it keeps itself saturated, it doesn't rot. Like stuff that's in lakes, like you can find two, three hundred year old logs in lakes. You pull them out, you dry them out, and they're still perfectly fine. They don't rot because there's no oxygen down there. this is petrified? Well, I'm not saying it's petrified. I'm saying it's very scared. Is that all you needed me for? Is that a joke? <laughs> yeah, there's no. no there's no cracks. There's no cracks. There's it's perfectly it's perfectly intact. And uh yeah, you know what? This is a, the purpose of this cabin is a sugar shack and it's functioning excellently as a sugar shack. Can I make pancakes? Can I make pancakes? You can make pancakes, we're making pancakes. Let's do this. Always rough making the first, the first batch of the pancakes. Rawer side, I'm done, but I don't mind them to be raw and doughy. Hey Don, you want to come grab your pancakes? You get first dib. Well, that, that's the first batch. Oh, okay. So you get the first batch. Oh wow! Thanks for uh, help with the pond. I'll move in all those rocks. No problem. You know there'll be some fish in it for you once we get those in. But uh, yeah. Thank you for the pancakes. You're welcome. Wonderful, delicious, fluffy, sweet. There you go. Well, nothing beats homemade pancakes with homemade maple syrup. My compliments to the chef. Chris is still in there making them. Making, he's making his own. You never want the first pancake. You always want the second batch. These are really good. They're nice and fluffy. Yeah, it's just how thick you want to make them. Chris has got the, uh, the like the full recipe on, on his channel if you want to go check it out. The Wooded Beardsman, you can actually check out his, uh, his video actually. He goes step by step on how to make a pancake. I also have all the pond stuff on there. It's yes. Mostly, it's mostly the pond build. Yes. Chris covered pretty extensively the pond. Is it remediation? Kind of, yeah. Well, it's obviously... Upgrading? It's turning, it's turning a catfish pond into a crystal clear mountain trout pond. Well, <laughs> people have probably been wondering where the heck I've been the last month. Yeah, making the pond. Digging. I've been playing in the mud, really, what, what it comes down to. There's some big changes coming up this, uh, this season. Exciting stuff. Bigger equipment. Yeah. Anyways, I'm going to enjoy my pancakes. I, got, I, I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and uh, join me on the next one.